Welcome back, everybody, to the Ma Kitchen Remodel. I'm going to start today off with answering a few of your questions. The most asked question was about how I am tying this into the wall, how it's diving in. And this side isn't. Well, this side, I couldn't have it dive into the wall because this is a brick chimney. And there's no way to get any framing in there like I was able to do on this side by putting the framing into the exterior wall. That's still not the reason why. The main reason why is there's going to be a peninsula cabinet that comes out and covers up this hole here. There's going to be a, a countertop on there, a quartz countertop, that overhangs into this room. Probably goes right up to the edge of these blinds here. Now, you gotta think way into the future. There's also gonna be a cabinet here. Big cabinet sticks out 14 inches, 13 and a half inches, comes down to here. And by the time you get your countertop, your Peninsula Island, and your backsplash that's covering all this up, you won't see much of this wall. Now the main reason that this goes into the wall and doesn't have a bump out is because of the goofy notch that would have to be cut into this big expensive slab of quartz. And it just would look odd having this one little notched out thing there. There you go. This is one of the arches that goes into the wall. It goes right straight on in there. Keep in mind, this is a vintage house. It's not meant to be remodeled to look like a new house. It's being updated to have just more modern features and to adjust the layout. I wear it when I do tile, I wear it when I do any sort of joint compound. Keeps your clothes nice and clean, especially when you got a fancy shirt like this. You get these on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. This one here, I personally have had three years. Got another one back at the workshop that had even longer. I think it's called Buffalo Industry. I think they're like 15 bucks each. Link's in the description. What is in this pocket here? What the heck is this? Gloves? I've never had gloves on this channel. It's been a while since I've worn this one. I just dug it out of the far corner of the, the tool trailer. These are actually, I remember these gloves. Yeah, Maxi Flex. Extra, extra large, and they're still not large enough. What if they make them in triple extra large? These are the best gloves I've ever worn. They still get in the way and they slow me down. I need that dexterity. I need to be able to pick things up. These are some really, they're really old and kind of dry rotted, but um, Maxi Flex. This is what I used to wear, then I became a man. For you ladies out there, I'll leave a link in the description. People have been asking about a drywall screw gun. And I, I have one that plugs into the wall, and you just turn it on, and you go, go. In this situation, uh, it's way overkill. It's loud, it's annoying, but I'm only putting in 100 screws. If I was doing thousands of screws, but if I did, I would break out the screw gun. I guess it's just technique that you screw it in just enough to dimple the paper. So all these look good, but there is one over here that didn't go all the way in. And before you go to do your mud, you just go through and give them a little tap a a little squeeze the trigger action. Just get that dimple. So I'm put the corner bead on, you put it on with spray adhesive, Super 77. Link will be in the description. I'm going to take this out to the garage and I spray this 
on the inside. Right up on in here. Woo. I don't want to spray it all over the house. Spray adhesive is basically the same as rubber cement. You coat both sides, you let them dry for a few minutes and get tacky, and then you stick it on. Probably wondering if I'm going to use tape. This is just the first application of hot mud. Hot mud, it dries hard as a rock. And what I'm doing is I'm packing this in. There's still this metal mesh up in here. So I'm packing this into that metal mesh. It'll bind to that. And it just is serving as a backing for when I go through with joint compound and tape. I probably won't even use half of this one box. Now in new construction homes, there will be a mountain of boxes delivered by a drywall supply company. And this is how they do it. They would, you know, and if you're doing a large volume, is that a spider? No. Large volume, what you do is you take this bag and you empty this entire bag into a five gallon bucket, mix it up, uh, thin it out if you need it, if you're doing the tape. Yeah, but you always add water to it and thin it down. Uh, I am doing small batches at a time, so I'll be scooping this out of here, into here, mixing, adding a little bit of water to the consistency that I like for taping. Here it is all mixed up, nice and creamy. Still a little on the thick side, but it'll be just fine because I'm using a knife to put it in. If you're mixing it up for a banjo or a bazooka, you're going to want it much thinner than this. mud the corner bead and I got some mud here just scooped from there to here I'm gonna mix this up I'm gonna add just a little bit of water not nearly as much water 
as I had when I was doing the corner bead. I always get this question. Do you put dish soap in your joint compound? I, I don't. I don't normally do that. Uh, I have done it in the past when working with other guys. So I'm going to put some in it just for you. We'll mix it up and I'll tell you if I see a difference. I'm not at the texturing phase yet, but I was just doing a little bit of skip troweling there. That's kind of the method that I'll be using to match this. Now you notice the, the original old texture is much more muted. And when it gets time to paint, I'll show you how I match something that looks like this to something that looks a little bit duller like that. Clean mud. And uh, well, I think the last coat with the uh, dish soap went on pretty smooth. I don't know if it was the dish soap or, or me or the mud or what, but it went pretty good. What do we got here, a little bugger? I am so happy. It's coming out real good. I like making things like this. You know what's interesting is this um, this joint compound is almost the same color as the paint in here. And if you just stand back and look at it, even though it's a rough first coat, there's so many imperfections that it almost looks like texture. We'll get to that texture. I can't wait to get that texture on there. Now that's the end of this episode. Links for all this good stuff, especially these coveralls, will be in the description. Leave your questions or comments below. Like the video, share the video, click that bell. Follow me on Instagram, The Handy Man. That'll be linked below also. And if you are interested in uh, the business side of home improvement, go over to The Handyman Business. Check that out.